tell us, what made you think of all this? Well, gosh, you know, this goes way back. We've been working on it for about eight years, trying to figure out what do people dream about in the future, you know, today. It was so different back when Walt created this um, 43 years ago. It was an innocent time when people didn't have microwave ovens or computers and we hadn't been to the moon. And now we've done all of those things. So today, we try to analyze what is it that's different. First thing we found is that the images, the stereotype images, are very dark. The Terminators and Blade Runners that have kind of been the, um, the forefront of future thinking and beautiful. And I love being in the theater seeing them. But if you ask me would I like to live in those futures, the answer is no. So we had to come up with something that sort of goes back to the reassurance and fun that Disneyland is all about. So everything from the plant materials that you see here, which are all edible, so it's a Garden of Eden, to the colors, which are reassuring and warm, to the cobblestones, to the attractions themselves, is designed to make people dream again, dream about a future, because I think that dreams fuel the future. And that's uh, what the story is all about. How much influence of the other parks around the world you know, are, are seen here? Well, I think the exciting uh, influence on Tomorrowland here for me was working in Paris. And let me talk a little bit about the city of Paris because uh, Paris is a city that has extremely contemporary futuristic elements like the IMP Pyramid in the Louvre and the Lavalette Science Center and the Pompidou Center. But they sit alongside their history and their culture. The Eiffel Tower is Victorian. The, the Louvre is a, a Renaissance building palace, uh, the medieval cathedrals and whatnot. And I think that's why we all seek out a city like Paris, because it, it honors those who have been before and it stays richer as it adds to it. Well, here in California, we've tended to blow down uh, each thing when we rebuild, you know. So the goal here was to bring back and honor some of the people, the dreamers, who dreamed about the future from the history of Disneyland with our lunar rocket, the moon rocket. Uh, from before Disneyland with Leonardo da Vinci and the H.G. Wells, with George Lucas, who we partnered with 10 years ago, and in Inventions and Rocket Rods, we've talked a little bit into the, the near term and the far future of dreams that are yet to be dreamed. So uh, I think it's this collection that makes it a much more community-like place and a fun place to sit and watch people in the same way that Fantasyland and Main Street have a sense of community. We wanted to bring that. This is no longer just an expo site. It's rich with all kinds of details and merchandising and food and, and just area ambiance that we never had before. So how much of Walt is here today? Well, more than there was about a year ago, we brought back the rocket to the moon. And I think the philosophy that Walt uh, brought to Tomorrowland when it opened of showing people the future that they're gonna partake in, the real um, challenge for us right now, and I think the the manifestation of that will be interventions. And it's not the interventions that's in Florida. That's a collection of um, just exhibits put on by different companies. This is a beautiful show, and I think you'll have a chance to see a lot of that this afternoon. We have a great robot host by the name of Tom Morrow, uh, who's going to take you on a journey into the worlds of uh, the home of the future, the workplace of tomorrow, which includes school, because kids going to school are going to the workplace, uh, entertainment, sports, and uh, transportation. And after we've given you a full-on Disney show, then you'll depart from that into a world where, like a trail through Alice in Wonderland, you'll explore a lot of these things and get a chance to uh, do a hands-on uh, experience with it. So what should we expect more tomorrow? more tomorrow? Tomorrow we've got Rocket Rods, which is not just a thrill ride like most of uh, other parks might do. Uh, Walt, I think, in bringing the Matterhorn to life here, established how thrill rides need to be handled, and that is there's some story behind it. So Rocket Rods explores why we as human beings are obsessed with changing the style, creating things in general, and why faster and faster in speed. And we broke that down into three Circle Vision presentations that are done to, uh, if, you, if you really listen hard, you'll see some uh, Sherman Brothers blended into the background along with Steve Bartek, who's uh, the orchestrator for Danny Elfman and was in Oingo Boingo. So it's a very odd mix but I think one that everyone will enjoy. Uh, and that accompanies us on this journey through those three films. Uh, but before that, before you enter the Circle Vision, we have another experience where you'll pass through a series of um, uh, homage to Disneyland's history of designing the future, in that many of the fanciful vehicles here have inspired and, 
and led kids to dream for the last 40 years. So you'll be walking through a hall of history looking at those very vehicles and some of the blueprints for vehicles and seeing a wonderful film that Walt Disney did in 1955 called Magic Highways that is a wacky look that we could never do today because we're too sophisticated, but looking at the naive way in which people th saw the transportation in the world of tomorrow. So those two elements lead up to a journey on our prototype today, which is being introduced in Tomorrowland called Rocket Rides. How about, uh, just real quick, like the submarine voyage, what, what, what plans may be? Well, you didn't let me finish. I've got Honey, and Honey pays tribute. I said that this land is about dreamers and dreams, and um, Wayne Zelensky is not too dissimilar from the Wright brothers. In Honey, I Shrunk the Audience, we're saying, it's all right to be crazy, it's all right to be wacky. In this society where everything is bottom line, and what's it gonna do for us if we spend the money on it? It's really good to stand back and say, you know, here's a guy that's created a wonderful, whimsical thing that'll shrink you or duplicate things, and he doesn't have to know where that's gonna go. It's not important. You've gotta honor that end of it, because the Wright brothers, if they had known we were gonna to need to have onboard restrooms and hot and cold meals and, and movies and stereophonic sound and all of that, they couldn't have, and 300 seats, they would have given up. You know, their goal was to create a whimsical, wacky plane that left the ground for a couple hundred feet. So that is something we really want to bring back to this land and say, that's okay. Now, subs. Huh? I didn't tell oh, you. Oh, I know. I was. I was thinking you were dodging. I'm Sam one. No. Okay. I thought you were dodging it. Go ahead. <laughs> Uh, well, I think the next thing everyone wants to know is what's next at Disneyland, and we always go through a process of exploring a lot of areas that we feel can be enhanced. And right now, we're looking at projects for Tomorrowland, Critter Country, and in, excuse me, I'll start over. Right now, we're looking at projects for Frontierland and Critter Country, as well as continuing what we started here today in Tomorrowland. And uh, I think you can look towards uh, the submarine ride and the Autopia, uh, being candidates for change in the future. Um, maybe they'll be as they are, maybe they'll change. And this is the process we go through, is looking at can we enhance it, can we put a better ride in, uh, and that in the next few months will be uh, part of my task. Um, what was I going to say? There's one final one I know you have to go. Um, I completely forgot. See, I'm good at doing that. Yeah, you are. <laughs> no, I really thought that you were going to blow the question up. I was like, okay. No. Um, <laughs> yeah, I guess I should, we should let you go. We got enough, I guess. Um, any last things you want anybody to know? Anybody who sees the video, what do you want them to know about New Tomorrowland? What do I want them to know? Exactly. I just what told you all. This. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, excuse me. Uh, just a minute, okay. Um, well, I hope you'll all give it a chance and try it. And think of the spirit of Walt Disney when he introduced those simple things like the bathroom of tomorrow and the home of the future and so forth. I think it's real important to get this down to a, a bite-size uh, concept here instead of staying, staying totally in the clouds like we are with Space Mountain and Star Tours. That's a nice future, but it's a way out future. And a lot of what we're trying to do is bring it down to um, something that is going to be part of your tomorrow. I love, for instance, one of my favorite things we haven't even talked about is the CD Riders, where you can step up to absolutely the first use of this technology in a public space, anywhere in the world. And the other night at a party, I said, you, I, stop for a minute and think, 10 years from now, when everyone's buying their media this way, that you were here at Disneyland the night we unveiled this for the very first time, anywhere in the world. So you have a, a fabulous modern technology that's allowing you to have dreams and images from your past. And this is kind of a micro demonstration of what we're trying to do in the land, is take those memories and those dreams that get you excited, marry that with contemporary technology, and that's what civilization is all about, is combining dreams with reality. And uh, so that's what we're doing. I remember what I wanted to say. You mentioned the Shermans. Is there any new music by the Shermans? No. No, actually we use, they rewrote Great Big Beautiful Tomorrow okay. for Intervention, so there's uh, five new verses um, being sung by Nathan Lane in there, and uh, they gave us a rewrite on a song which I'll let you as trivia buffs figure out this Rocket Rise, but it is one of their classic songs that was very inspirational in its uh, earlier incarnation, and I said to them, can you tweak it so it tells a slightly different story but doesn't lose 
the power that it had in its first version. So that's enough of a hint. <laughs> that's all right. All right. Okay. Thank you very much.